Welcome to worship from Grace Lutheran Church. Although we are not all gathered together in the same place, we are gathered together as a community of people who follow Jesus to worship, hear God's word, and pray together. <clears throat> Today is celebrating Connection Stewardship Sunday at Grace. Human beings need connections with God and with each other. For the past several weeks at Grace, we've been focused on how we connect, sharing stories and delivering treats. While it might be a little more challenging to stay connected during this pandemic, the people of Grace have stayed connected in a variety of ways, some of which we'll hear more about later in the worship service today. A community Thanksgiving worship service will be held via Zoom tonight at 7 p.m. The link was in your newsletter and Thursday's email. Join the pastors and people of Grace Lutheran Church, First Congregational Church, UCC, Wisconsin Rapids Moravian Church, and St. John the Evangelist Episcopal Church to worship and give thanks to God, even in the midst of these challenging times. Advent begins next Sunday. Advent is the season of the church year when we focus on getting rally, ready to celebrate Jesus' birth. While we, are, while we are not holding Wednesday evening Advent worship services at Grace this year, we are mailing Advent devotional booklets and calendars with some ideas about how you might include the season of Advent in your home this year. I invite you to light your candle at this time. If you choose to have one, a candle flame reminds us of the light of Jesus shining in and through us. Breathe deeply and prepare your hearts and minds and bodies to worship God. Come, let us sing out loud to the Lord. Let's raise a joyful shout to the rock of our salvation. Let's come before him with thanks. Let's shout songs of joy to him. The Lord is a great God, the great King over all other gods. The earth's depths are in his hands. The mountain heights belong to him. The sea which he made is his along with the dry ground, which his own hands formed. Come, let's worship and bow down. Let's kneel before the Lord, our Maker. He is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, the sheep in his hands. Continue with the prayer. Let us pray. O God of power and might, your Son shows us the way of service 
and in him we inherit the riches of your grace. Give us the wisdom to know what is right and the strength to serve the world you have made through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll continue with the reading from Matthew 25, verses 31 to 46, and Rick will do that. Testing. The gospel today comes from Matthew chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. Jesus compares himself to a king who moves among his subjects to see how he is treated. What is done for the least of those who belong to his family is truly done for him. Jesus said to the disciples, When the Son of Man comes into his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him, and he will separate people one from another, as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand, and the goats at his left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you that are blessed by my father, Inherit the kingdom you prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it when we saw a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it when we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king answered them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these who are members of my family, you did it to me. Then he will say to those on his left hand, You are the accursed. Depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry, and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. And then they will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison? and did not take care of you. Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it for the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. Word of God, word of life, thanks be to God. Grace and peace from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Michelle's on vacation this week, so it's my honor and privilege to share the message with you today. Celebrating connections is a stewardship theme today that goes along with the gospel reading. When we were originally talking about uh, today, we were wondering if we should change the gospel reading. And we said, well, let's see what the Holy Spirit has in mind for the reading for today, and it is very appropriate. Connections. Connections. Connections are very, very important. My grandson Liam was over the other day, and this was prior to Halloween, and we were just playing, 
and he asked to play with my animatronic Yoda. And if you don't know by now, I have a Yoda obsession. This started back in 1977 when I first saw Star Wars at the tender and very impressionable age of 15. Since then, I have collected various forms of my beloved character. Uh, this mask on the end here is from 1982 when I was in college. That was my first, which spanned into many others, uh, such as, sorry Jim, I'm moving, uh, shirts, trinkets, Pez dispensers, Christmas ornaments, mugs, hats, and even this onesie that I wore when I picked up Liam and Madeline off the bus right before Halloween. They were thrilled, I'm sure. And my pièce de résistance, my animatronic Yoda. Um, you probably don't know some things about Yoda that I've learned over the years. For instance, uh, did you know that Yoda's a very good gardener? That's right, some say he has a green thumb. You also may not know that Yoda does not like his toast on the dark side. Okay, that's my Yoda jokes. Okay, now back to the story. Uh, there is a point here and I shall get to it, hopefully. So anyway, we're in the closet digging out the animatronic Yoda. And so I turn him on and I speak to him and nothing. Hmm. Liam is puzzled and I am disappointed. But I explained to him, I said, well, well, maybe the batteries are dead. So I opened up the battery compartment and found that I had wisely placed a piece of paper between the batteries and the connections, the contacts. So, no connection, no life force. Restoring the connection was effective as I shall demonstrate. Yoda, teach me the force. The force, Yoda. He's not responsible. <laughs> so that's why Yoda. So even Yoda knows that, hmm, yes. No life force without connections there is. Mm, yes. Now, again, as some of you may not know, I am a chemical engineer. And chemical engineers have to learn many things. We learn, obviously, chemistry. We learn physics. This is my lab coat from college, so it kind of still fits, kind of. Anyway. We learn lots of things including, what's on my list here? Math, chemistry, of fluid dynamics, and thermodynamics. Now, the second law of thermodynamics is appropriate for today. The second law of thermodynamics is entropy. Entropy will tend to increase over time. If you've never heard of entropy, essentially entropy is the measure of disorder and randomness in a system. Or as I remember it, systems always tend towards the lowest state of energy. For example, as a grandparent, if you clean up the grandchildren's play area and they return very shortly, it will be in a higher state of entropy, greater disorder, very shortly. Kind of like stacking marshmallows. Well, what do you mean by that? Well, we have the law of gravity and we have the law of entropy. And as I stack marshmallows, I am increasing the potential energy of the top marshmallows. So the question is, how many marshmallows can I stack on top of each other without gravity and entropy Interfering. This is five, maybe? No, no, four was my limit. 
So without anything to hold them up, the marshmallows fall. Entropy, gravity. However, if I add connections like these toothpicks, I add stability. I'm adding energy into the system that helps it stay connected. And with that, with those connections, I am able to overcome entropy. Ta-da! Okay, that's my science lesson. Now, thirdly, if I can get my lab coat off here. I'm back on this side now, Jim. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm supposed to, okay, so that was my second lesson. Mm, yes, no life force without connections there is. Got to continue the Yoda theme here. So thirdly, the men's group is currently studying uh, C.S. Lewis's opus, Mere Christianity, which is based on BBC broadcasts during the Battle of Britain in the 1940s. He uses the analogy of a fleet of ships regarding the three important components of Christian morality. The first is to ensure that the ships, I hope my pronunciation is right here, diction, ships. The first is to ensure that the ships or people, as he's referring to, do not drift apart. The second is that the ships, or people, do not collide into one another. And the third is that all the ships, the people, are going to the correct destination. The first part, ensuring that we do not drift apart, is analogous to the cliche of two ships passing in the night. Without communication, Without connections, with entropy, what it is, oh, look at that. <laughs> entropy has won. The marshmallows have fallen. Without entropy, what it, with, without entropy, what it is, without intentional, concerted effort to avoid it, we will drift apart. We'll drift apart from each other. We'll drift apart from our family. We'll drift apart from our community. We'll drift apart from our church. And we'll drift apart from our God. So here at Grace, in the midst of a long-lasting pandemic, how have we fostered connections with each other and with God? Let's use that gospel lesson as a guide. We'll leave the subject of the goats, uh, sheep and the goats, and judgment for another time. That's another message. I'll let Michelle handle that one. We'll also leave behind the supercilious, literal overinterpretations of the significance of right and left, which in the 1950s caused nuns to tie my left-handed sister, Lorene's hand behind her back so that she would use the right hand to write. So, back to the gospel. For I was hungry, and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. Grace has been very active over the years, including this past year during the pandemic, in helping supply both resources and volunteers to help in this area with sponsorships for the neighborhood table, staffing and supplying sweeps, helping with Ruby's pantry, and all these efforts have helped feed, nourish, and quench those in needs in our community. And these are no diminutive actions. Grace, as a part of this loving community, distributed over 600,000 pounds of food last year, feeding over 6,000 households. Just in one, Grace parking lot food drive, members donated over 300 pounds. And we donate much more than material items. We donate our time. There are 32 active SWEPS volunteers from Grace. Jim, who's doing the video, I know is one of those. Usually when I'm serving, it's with Jim. 
our second admonition. For I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. Our new grace mission starts with welcoming everyone. Our bread ministry is a great example of this in non-COVID times. Not just welcoming visitors, but actively and materially thanking them for joining us in breaking of the bread. Our recent stewardship gift bag delivery of 180 bags, to be precise, went out not only to official members, but those who we knew had been attending services or reaching out to us as strangers. As a part of Love Inc., along with our 15 other area Christian church partners, we welcome and help those in need, many of whom are new to our community and just about all strangers to us. Another admonition. For I was naked and you clothed me. I had to chuckle a little bit when I read in the weekly email and or monthly newsletters a while back, uh, this was during COVID, uh, with Michelle pleading with people that they can stop bringing clothes to Grace now as Chet has ceased collecting clothes for the migrant workers and we were giving stuff full of clothes. What a testament of grace and grace at seeing a need and addressing it and having to say, stop, we've got enough. Our annual, okay, maybe not this year, but usual annual Coats for Kids drive out in the hallway results in an overflowing box of coats, hats, mittens, and scarves for children in need. Another admonition. For I was sick, and you took care of me. I don't know how many members Pastor Michelle has visited this past year, whether sick, isolated, or infirm, but I do know how many people that I deliver gift bags to that mention how much they appreciated those visits. And the soul ministry, which Steph, doing sound and projection, uh, coordinates, that prepares meals for those that are going through hard times. What a loving gesture to spare the thought of cooking and to enjoy some warm, comfort food in times of stress. For I was in prison and you visited me. Our very own Ryan McMillan is the Wood County Drug Court Coordinator whom we have worked with to provide incentive gifts and prizes for participants as they make their way through the program. One of the ministries on the radar at Love Inc. is the help and support for those that are released from jail or prison and to help them get and stay on the correct path. All these connections to our church and our community, to those in need, are ways we, as the gospel says, did it to the least of those who are members of God's family. We did it to him. These examples by no means imply perfection or completion. Far from it. These are simply ways in which to this point, we as members of grace have met the command to love our neighbor. And all of these required connections. All of these connections require resources, time, talent, and treasure to maintain and indeed grow our loving responses. We need each other. We are the body of Christ. As it says in Romans, so we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. And in Corinthians, for just as the body is one and has many members, and all members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. Now you, us, are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And lastly, in Colossians, Jesus is the head of the body, the church. We as individuals as followers of Jesus Christ. Yes, we are Christians, but the church, the body of Christ, is all Christians together. We need each other 
to form and perform as the body of Christ. We need the connections to and with each other. In this time of reflection, let us consider how we can foster and nurture greater connections with God, with each other, with our church, and with God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, you have provided so many ways that we can connect with you and with each other. You have provided each of us with gifts and talents to be shared together as your body. Help us to see, to step out of our comfort zone, to use what you have provided to the best of our ability, so that one day you will say to us, well done, good and faithful servant. In your holy and blessed name we pray. Thank you so much, Rick, for that beautiful message. We'll continue with the prayers of the people. Oh, I'm sorry, we're continuing with special music. And furthering our message of connections, uh, one of the things that the stewardship uh, board did was to ask the boards and different groups that were meeting uh, two questions. Uh, and the questions that we focused on were, what are some of the ways that we connect with God? And what are the, some of the ways that we connect with each other? And so these chains up here on the altar, um, all contain responses that were received by members of grace. And so I wanted to share with you what some of these are. So the question was, what helps you connect with God? Here are some of the responses. And as you hear these, think about, um, yes, I'm doing that, or I might want to do that. So again, what helps you connect with God? Journaling, Bible study, Prayer, listening to Christian music, art, 
being outside in nature, like Tim hunting today, right, Steph? <laughs> Sitting in a tree, that was probably Tim's as well. Witnessing the connections our Sunday schoolers, aged three years old to fifth grade, make to God and his word, and seeing his work through them. Watching grace services on YouTube, you're doing it right now. Writing down prayers. I thought that was an interesting one. One that I could try. Second question was, how are you connecting with others during the pandemic? Again, some of the responses, and this included the youth as well. Short masked visits, Zoom with family, Bible journaling again, gathering around a fire pit outside with a small group, volunteering, the ways we can do our admonitions from the gospel today, phone calls, walking, spending time alone or with friends outside in the fresh air, trying to get some exercise while getting through this pandemic and avoiding what a pandemic 10 or 20, huh? tell me about it. Prayer partners, keeping connected with my prayer partner and participating in a group Zoom, get together to share stories, see familiar faces and share some fun. Working on a Stewardship Grace Connects project, baking and delivering care packages to Grace members was a very inspirational activity. Trying to support our community and local businesses without exposing myself to risk by ordering takeout food and purchasing gift cards. So those are some of the ways that our Grace members have been connecting with God and with each other. Now we'll continue with the prayers of the people. Longing for Christ's reign to come among us, we pray for the outpouring of God's power on the church, the world, and all in need. Each prayer ends with the words, Lord, in your mercy. Please respond by saying, hear our prayer. Ruler of all, train our ears to hear your cry in the needs of those around us. Bless all social ministries of the church through which we seek to serve others as we ourselves have been served. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Hear our prayer. You cause rain to fall on the just and unjust alike. Direct our use of creation to provide for the needs of people in ways that are sustainable for the earth. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bring peace to every place where conflict rages. Heal the sinful divisions we erect between us and release us from systems of oppression and prejudice. Restore our capacity to see your image in those whose dignity we have stripped away. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You created us to be connected to you and to each other. Guide us in prayer and praise to you. Help us to think creatively about how we might connect with others during this time when it is safer for us to be physically apart. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Pour out the gifts of your spirit on children and youth throughout the church. Sustain those who work in children's ministry, youth ministry, and campus ministry as they nurture the gifts of young people. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for those Grace members who are our families of the week. Joe and Raquel Nowak, Hunter and Zach, Tim and Lisa Leverance, Todd and Kelly Wittenberg, Dylan and Logan, Arnold and Angela Strangfeld, Madison and Brooke. For people with health concerns, including Linda, surgery for broken ankle, Sarah, cancer treatment, Angela, chemo, Carol, cancer, Mark, stem cell transplant, Laura, chemo and surgery, Fred, declining health, Sarah, with pregnancy concerns, 
Chuck and Joyce for declining health. For those who are ill with COVID-19, who are quarantined or waiting for test results, bring them patience, healing, access to medical care, and reminders of your love. For those who are grieving, including Sam Dove at the deaths of his father and brother, Barb Frazier at the death of her mother, Susan Dempsey and Heidi Slinkman at the death of their mother and grandmother, Gail Michelson. And for those we name now, either in silence or aloud, Bless each of these beloved children of yours with healing, comfort, and peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Receive our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, until that day when you gather all creation around your throne, where you will reign forever and ever. Amen. We'll continue with the Lord's Prayer. Please join me wherever you are. Let's pray together as Jesus taught. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial, and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. May the God of all creation, in whose image we are made, who claims us and calls us beloved, who strengthens us for service, pour out blessings upon you. The blessing of God, Creator, Savior, and Spirit be with you today and always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. <laughs> Just a couple of announcements for today. Uh, Rick had mentioned prayer partners in our connections, and prayer partners just had their um, revelation uh, last week on Zoom, and we are um, picking names for prayer partners for the coming year, um, now through uh, 2021, from a year from now. So if you haven't sent your slips in to me, please send those right away on Monday. And um, I will let you know after we draw names uh, who is partnered with who and we'll pray for them secretly all year. If you would like to join prayer partners, um, please contact me, Jana Nelson. And if you don't know me, contact the church office and they will get a hold of me. Thank you. Also an announcement um, from Love Inc., some employment opportunities. With a gracious grant from the Legacy Foundation to accelerate growth at Love, Inc., there are two new paid part-time position opportunities. The first one is Church Mobilization Coordinator. It's 30 hours a week with responsibilities of working with our partner church ambassadors to further nurture church relationships and build our volunteer base at each. The second one is an Office Ministry Assistant 20 hours a week with responsibilities for general day-to-day -day office support as well as coordinating office volunteers. If you are interested in either of these opportunities, please contact Love Inc., Rick, or check the opportunities out on Indeed.com. We will continue um, if you prefer or would like to. We will continue um, on Zoom to uh, continue our connections with each other and staying in touch. Thank you so much, everyone, for joining us today. Um, stay safe.
Yoda, teach me the force. A pause. Yeah, very nice. Yeah. Now you do it. <laughs> See, that was supposed to be.